one thing I'd like to move forward uh, to talk about is something that I really wanted to do for a long time. And that was, I was in a position similar to you where you were working at a bank straight after school. Yeah. And I was, I was working as a storeman. And I thought to myself, what, do I, what am I going to do with my life? I was sort of like, this mm. isn't, you know, what I really want to be doing. Mm. And I started to have this idea that, you know, I really should be involved in the Australian Secret Service or I should be a spy or something <laughs> like that. But you were involved with ASIO. Yeah. And we can talk about that. We can in general terms general because terms. I signed secrecy um, papers when I left to say that I wouldn't talk about any operations or, or any individuals or anything like that. But in general terms, I can talk about it, yeah. Now, I've heard stories from people who have applied for ASIO and they've had people come to their house or people take photos of them while they're out. And was any of that taking place or, or t- taking place while you were approaching that as a career or was it just... just uh, in the earlier days of ASIO, more, more or less people just trying to get people in. Um... Look, as far as I know, um, it was based on, on who knows who stuff in those days. Recruitment in ASIO in those days, <clears throat> I mean, they, didn't, they, didn't, they wouldn't dream of putting an ad in the paper, mm. whereas now they do. In those days, it was very much a network of people who you know and trust. And... Um, my father, having spent all of his life in the British Army, the vast majority of his life in the British Army, as an officer, a uh, doctor, mm. meant that another doctor living two doors down from us, whose wife's brother was in ASIO, was a, a contact, somebody who you got to know, went around for a barbecue. Um, and he, he, he asked me, because I, I was leaving school, doing my leaving certificate at the time, and he asked me, what, you know, what are you doing? I said, oh, you know, I've got a job in the Commonwealth Bank and I've just done my leaving certificate and I'm going to go to uh, Sydney Uni and do my economics degree. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, you know. And so that's the way it started, by being introduced to somebody and therefore I would have been what in modern terms you'd be called a, a prospect, mm. a prospect. And then when I got in a little couple of years older, then I got the telephone call saying, you know, I'd like to meet you. I'm so and so, so and so from um, from the Commonwealth Attorney General's Department. Mm-hmm. Um, would you be prepared to uh, to um, uh, to have a further discussion following the discussion you had with um, John so and so? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we met in a in a um, in a uh, an old fashioned milk bar, you know, with the with the, the booth seats and all the rest of it. Um, what was that like? Were you meeting with a guy from ASIO? And... Oh, I didn't know it was ASIO okay. at, that, at that moment. Okay, yeah. that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Because you would have been freaking out. <laughs> and so we sat down and uh, he, he started asking. And at the end of the second interview, which I had in a, an, an off, a, a nondescript office in the centre of Sydney, mm. Sydney, he said to me, um, would you be interested in applying for a job in um, a, um, a, a, an important and, um, and secret organisation that works for government? And I went looked at him and said, yeah, I say that. And he said, well, um, and then um, signed the document. Nothing that you say from here on in will be recorded and you're not allowed to talk about it. So I signed the document and it turned out to be ASIO. Yeah. Wow. Within a month, I was resigning from um, the Commonwealth Bank and um, trying to find out if, they could, if ASIO could help me move my uh, economics degree to Melbourne University because I was being posted to Melbourne. And I was in my Volkswagen and pedalling down the Hume Highway down to Melbourne. So what, what goes through your mind as a young man, what, 18, 19 years yeah. old, now going to work as a, for lack of a better term, secret agent for the government? Well, Secret agent is not the right word. Well, it's, um, it's, um, it's not unlike the army, really. Right. In, in mindset, to me, it would be, it's a, it's a unique and special a uh, special organisation and um, you um, uh, are going to have to submit to the discipline mm-hmm. of the organisation. And I, 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 I wasn't particularly apprehensive. I was probably, if, if apprehensive at all, it would be about the unknown mm. rather than about the nature of what it is that I was going to do. See, I think that, <clears throat> and I'm sure ASIO are watching now because, you know, why no, not? That's fine. You've got to do something. 
with your date? <laughs> I always thought, and particularly now, with yeah. me on the internet as a comedian who's traveling around the world, that I would be a great prospect because no one would ever think that I'm involved with absolutely anything. I would just be there. Like, oh, there's that guy from the internet. Meanwhile, collecting data, information, Will you be my reference? I guess that's my question moving in through here. I, don't know, I just think it would be a really, really interesting job. And you get to do a lot of well, look, strange things. Have, things. things have changed a good deal since then. <clears throat> now it's a much more rigorous recruitment process uh, where they would, you know, they'd want to do psychological and uh, attitudinal and personality and all range of things, which they didn't really do then. Mm. They really based, based their thing on, well, it comes from a good family. Um, um, the family's always been loyal. Uh, clearly, their um, their politics are are um, in line. Uh, in line. Blah blah blah. Mm. So much different now. 